scopers. Hi there, Hana scopers. <laughs> okay, so um, I'm a little late tonight, so um, this video will be recorded and it'll probably be put on to my uh, to my hi hi there, Ali. So this video will be recorded and put onto my YouTube. Because I'm doing it kind of late. Um, yeah, I got a late start tonight. But in any case, better late than never. So here is the video. And it will also be uploaded to um, YouTube. Um, Lovely Lady Hana Love on YouTube. Um, and for the replay watchers, thank you for tuning in. And so tonight is Nightly Ritual day number two. Oh, you can barely hear me? Hey, wait a minute. Thank you for letting me know that sound check. Okay. How is it now? Is it still the same? Or did it get louder? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hello? Okay. <laughs> is it still there? Because I dropped the phone. <laughs> Okay, great. All right, so tonight is nightly ritual day two or night two, and I still have my throat chakra candle here. As you can see, this candle is for the throat chakra, and great, excellent, thank you. This candle is for the throat chakra. Hi, Millie Ace. This uh, candle is for the throat chakra, and um, and so I'm using it to kind of help me. I've been using, this is day two of the throat chakra candle, and I've been using it to help me speak my truth and actually just state what I mean and, and mean it, you know, wholeheartedly. So tonight, I wanted to tell people, hey, <laughs> Tonight, I wanted to go into how I became Hana Love and what I learned about love. Because I've been Hana Love for some years now. Um, on Facebook, I changed my name and on YouTube. Um, I think it's been about like five years now. And so I thought, you know, I should tell people, you know, when, when I... Uh, lit my throat chakra candle and I started doing the throat chakra exercises that was one of the things that came to me and it was like tell people why you are Hana Love it's not just a catchy name it's uh, you know I didn't just adopt it because it was catchy okay so here it is um <laughs> and this is kind of very very personal but I'm going to give you as much detail as I can without giving you everything but here it is Okay, so um, about five years ago, um, I was married, and um, I was going through a a separation. I was going through a separation that was supposed to result in a divorce, right? And during that time, it was very tumultuous for me, and <laughs> I had the experience of thinking that, you know, I might even have to either share custody or give custody to my ex and I would, you know, be the visiting parent, which just, I mean, at the time it just boggled my mind, right? So anyway, I, at the time I was, I was still a student. In, um, I was going to school. Um, I think I was working on my master's at that time and I was, um, I had a job too. So it just made sense that, you know, the kids would stay with, you know, their father at the time. But in any case, after about two weeks of that arrangement, I couldn't take it anymore. And I went to go get my children and, you know, the turmoil started. <clears throat> and so I couldn't just go get them. I had to go to court. I had to you know, <laughs> do a whole lot of things to get my children. And, they, you know, I have two, at the time, I only had two little daughters. I had two daughters, and they were both young, young girls. They were 
probably two and three at the time. Um, no, maybe three and four at the time. Um, but they weren't school age yet. So you could imagine trying to go to school and work and having um, children that they're not in school. So, of course, they, they need child care. And so it was kind of like them being with their dad was kind of going to cut on cut down on child care bills for the both of us since he had his mother to help him. But anyway, to make a long story short, when I went to get the children, um, I had to go through the courts and I had to go through a whole lot of paperwork, a whole lot of traveling back and forth, blah, 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 blah. I wind up failing my uh, that semester in school. I wind up losing my job, which resulted in losing my apartment, which resulted in losing all of my possessions, which, <laughs> which you know, just was very, very, very uh, tumultuous for me at the time and I felt so low I was so low I mean I was at if there was a such thing as the lowest point you could be at that's where I was mentally I was low I was very very low mentally and you know um I didn't even at the time I was very I was very much into Islam and um even that was not a comfort for me. That was kind of kind of had became a burden because there were so many laws and obstacles and things like that, which I was supposed to uphold. But because I was in this tumultuous state of mind, I was just like, I don't want to read no Quran. I don't want to hear nothing about anything. Don't tell me anything. I don't want to hear it. Like, I was just like, you can't talk to me. You know, and so, you know, um, after everything was said and done, the courts gave me full custody of my children. But mind you, my children were coming home to a place that I was losing and I no longer had my job. And so I had to make some decisions really fast. And so I gather all the things I had, all of my possessions, and I put them up for sale on like Craigslist and eBay and things like that. And, you know, this church came and they bought all my belongings and everything. And I took the money and I got my car fixed and I packed all the stuff that we had left and I got in the car and I just drove and drove and drove. And I got to Georgia and, uh, when I got to my mom's house, (laughs) You know, um, me and my mom never really had a relationship um, just because, well, for a lot of reasons. I'm going to be kind of blatantly honest on this Periscope. While I was a child, not now, but (laughs) I'm grateful you're out of that predicament. Transformation to Hannah. Love you. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Yes. So at that time, I wasn't, me and my mom didn't have a really close relationship. And so by the time I got to her house, she said, okay, well, the kids can stay here, but we don't have enough room for you, you know? And so I had to make a decision. Do I take my kids with me and go to a shelter or do I leave them there at her house and go find somewhere for me to live? So, of course, I decided to leave the kids there at her house and go find somewhere for me to live until I found a job or whatever. And so I wind up going to live with a friend. And during that time, I saw my friend or what I thought was my friend (laughs) in a relationship with someone. And I couldn't understand why she was staying in this relationship. Like, hi, hi, Mia, hi. I couldn't understand why she was staying in the relationship, you know, but the only thing I could really understand was that she obviously really, 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 really loved this man, (laughs) but she loved him so much that she could not see, you know, the, the havoc that it was having on her life, you know, um, And there was nothing I could tell her. I could tell from the way she loved him that I could not approach her and tell her, 
hey, what this man is asking you to do is dangerous for your health. Hey, what this man is asking you to do is not a good thing for your children. I could, I could not go to her and say that to her, you know. And so before I left, I said I have to reach her in some way. And so I said, well, you know what? I'll reach her through demonstration. <laughs> you know, I will demonstrate to her why you don't want to follow this man, why you shouldn't be, why you should leave and you should run and not look back. <laughs> and and I, so, you know, at the end of the day, I wound up having to leave her house and go back to my mom's house. And of course, my mom was still of the same belief. There was not enough room for me and I needed to find a place. So I'll make a long story short, um, I wind up going back to live <laughs> with my ex-husband and his mother. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> so this, I mean, this was like the lowest of the lowest time in my life, right? But when I went back to live with him, the thing that had really changed with him and that had really made me look at myself and say, Oh my God, I still have, I don't know what it is here, but I still have some kind of feelings here, but I, I don't know what they are. I don't know what it is because when I went back, yeah, <laughs> when I went back, he was very, very, um, he was very ill. He had already been going through, um, uh, kidney failure, you know, and he had already had, uh, was going through that, you know, with, with the kidney failure. But, you know, when I left, everything was under control. You know, he was getting his regular dialysis and stuff like that. And so he didn't really have any, you know, it, it really wasn't affecting his life in, in such a way that, you know, made, made me, made me have concern that, oh my God, he might not be here for much longer, you know, but when I went back, after leaving for some time and coming back, you know, um, I found him and he was just in a state of, you know, pure, um, he was in a, a state where, you know, you just think, oh my God, this person might have a few more months with us. You know, that's what he looked like. You know, he was very frail and he was very, um, just like, you know, just not there any, you know, just not the same person, you know, he was like half the man that I left behind. And, you know, I, I didn't, I don't know what happened, what came over me, but at that time I felt like, oh my God, I can't let him, I can't let him, you know, be in this situation. I have to help him. You know, I felt that I needed to help him. I felt that this, this urging, like if I, I, tr I went back and forth with myself because I, I didn't want to re-enter a relationship, but I wanted to help him. And anyway, um, so I came back and I did actually go back and stay with his mother and uh, everything, uh, for a while. And during that time, I helped him, of course, because he was, he was sick at that time. He was really sick. He needed help. And so I stayed there and I helped them. And the whole time I was there, I knew that my purpose was not to necessarily help him get better, but my purpose was to help him believe that life was worth, was worth fighting for. Because when somebody gives up on life, there's nothing you can do to help them. You can't, you, you have to recognize the difference between when somebody gives up on life and when when it's just somebody their health is failing because your health can be failing but if you're not giving up on life you're still fighting you know that person's still in the fight you know that person's they're still going they're still finding that second win but when they just lay down and say you know i i don't even care anymore i don't you know i i don't i don't have a i don't even i don't even care about winning I don't even care what happens. I'm, I'm done. You know, there's a real problem. You can't, there's, it's, it's no medication. There's no herbs or pills or anything that can help them that you have to build their, you have to build their core belief first. You have to make them understand that life is worth 
living, that the sweetness of life. He had lost the sweetness of life. And so my goal was to try to show him that life was still sweet. You know, even as his ex-wife, I still wanted to, to show him that, you know, um, because I knew I, I had discovered something. And what I had discovered was that love is a force to be reckoned with. Let me tell you, love is a force to be reckoned with. And when I say that, I understood, I finally understood the power of love. Love has a power and a life all of its own, baby. You don't come between. Like I said, my friend was in a relationship with a man that I, I felt was harming her. But I knew my intuition told me, don't you come in between that. That woman loves that man. And if you come in between that, you're going to, you're going to have hell because she love is a force that you don't get in front of love trying to get in front of a woman or a man that's in love with someone and you know that they're in a passionate deep love with them it's like getting in front of a moving train a moving train trust me you will be a casualty so stop in your tracks and just step away you got to figure out another way because you're not going to be able to stop that train and so I had to come to the realization that love was not something that I could control it was not something that I could control it was not something that I could turn off and turn on when I wanted to it was there and it was something that I had to uh I had to acknowledge because when I didn't acknowledge it, I actually became physically sick. When I was going through the turmoil in myself of whether or not to go and help him, I actually fell physically sick. I fell sick. I could not eat. I could not drink. I, anything I tried to eat came right back up. I went to the doctor. They said, well, we don't, we don't find anything wrong with you. We don't know what's, what the problem is, but my intuition and you know, that inner voice was saying, you know what the problem is. You know what it is. You are trying to deny what it is that is in your heart. And you can't do that. You can't live that life. That's not you. You know, and I found throughout the years that I cannot live a lie. I can't be in a lie. I can't. This it, just, it, it's just, it just, it just tears me apart when I have to, especially when it's a lie that, uh, that is, that I, f I know I feel something in my, uh, in my being, I feel it and I deny it. That one makes me sick. That one will literally make me physically sick. So I had to come to the realization that love was a powerful force that could not be, um, tampered with. You couldn't turn, you can't turn it on. You can't turn it off. You can't coerce someone into loving you. You can't force them into loving you. And I also had to come to the realization that everybody does not have the capacity to love you at the level that you want to be loved. And to ask them to love you at that, um, at that level is oppression. It's oppression because they don't have the capacity. They just don't have the capacity to do it. And it's, 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 it's okay. You know, everybody has different, you know, capacities and different levels at which they can respond to their environment. And I had to come to the realization that Everybody doesn't have the capacity to do what it is that I feel like is necessary in order for me to, to feel loved or, or in order for me to feel like, you know, this is the relationship for me. But it didn't make them a bad person. It didn't make them, you know, a bad person. It just, that wasn't, it wasn't their capacity. They didn't have that capacity. And, so once I came to that realization, I was able to, um, to relax in myself and I was able to kind of like come back into my body. Cause literally I felt like I was outside of my body. I felt like I was a different person. I felt like I was detached 
from a part of myself. And it took a while before I felt like I was together again, before I felt like I was back inside of myself. I don't know what to describe that feeling as, but I just felt like I was having an outer body experience. And so at the end of the day, I realized that love had, I had learned a powerful lesson about love. And so I changed my name to Hana Love. And that's how I became Hana Love. Through that tumultuous experience, through that watching two people in love and knowing that, you know, this, knowing that that situation was not healthy. Thank God, you know, she finally would left that relationship. It, no, no, wasn't no cause to me. I had nothing to do with it, but whatever the circumstances was, that spirit brought into that relationship, it caused her to be, you know, to be removed from that relationship and hopefully put in something that was better. But, um, yes, I came to the realization that the power of love, it, it's the power of love. You have to respect the power of love. And that, that's, that's the whole, the whole synopsis of what it is. And so that's how I became Hana Love. And so the lessons that I learned about love was, like I said, love cannot be coerced. It cannot be forced. Um, and love is very powerful. It's a force to be reckoned with. You cannot, you cannot, um, come in between love when someone is in love with someone when someone has love like a mother's love for her children or a, a man's love for his wife or a woman's love for her husband or a person's love for their mother I'll dare you try to come in between that you will become a casualty and so that's that's it so that's how I became Hannah Love y'all so the lesson is respect love because love is a powerful force. And that's it for tonight, y'all. And that's my throat chakra candle and my nightly ritual. And I hope y'all enjoyed it. <laughs> Thank you, Miliace. Have a good night, y'all. <laughs> when I went back, <laughs> he was very, very um, he was very ill. He had already been going through um, uh, kidney failure, you know, and he had already had uh, was going through that, you know, with with the kidney failure. But, you know, when I left, everything was under control. You know, he was getting his regular dialysis and stuff like that. And so he didn't really have any, you know, it, it really wasn't affecting his life in, in such a way that you know made made me made me have concern that oh my god he might not be here for much longer you know but when i went back after leaving for some time and coming back you know um i found him and he was just in a state of you know pure um he was in a, a state where you know you just think, oh, my God, this person might have a few more months with us. You know, that's what he looked like. You know, he was very frail and he was very um, just like, you know, just not there. And, you know, just not the same person. You know, he was like half the man that I left behind. And, you know, I, I, didn't, I don't know what happened, what came over me. But at that time, I felt like. Oh my God, I can't let him, I can't, uh, to my, hi, hi there, Ali. So this video will be recorded and put onto my YouTube because I'm doing it kind of late. Um, yeah, I got a late start tonight, but in any case, better late than never. So here is the video and it will also be uploaded to, um, YouTube. Um, lovely lady Hannah Love on YouTube um, and for the replay watchers thank you for tuning in and so tonight is nightly ritual day number two. Oh, you can barely hear me hey, wait a minute thank you for letting me know that sound check okay how is it now is it still the same 
or did it get louder? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hello? Okay. <laughs> Is it still there? Because I dropped the phone. <laughs> okay. Great. All right. So. Tonight is nightly ritual day two or night two, and I still have my throat chakra candle here. As you can see, this candle is for the throat chakra. Take my kids with me and go to a shelter, or do I leave them there at her house and go find somewhere for me to live? So, of course, I decided to leave the kids there at her house and go find somewhere for me to live until I found a job or whatever. And so I wind up going to live with a friend. And during that time, I saw my friend or what I thought was my friend <laughs> in a relationship with someone. And I couldn't understand why she was staying in this relationship. Like, hi, hi, Mia, hi. I couldn't understand why she was staying in the relationship, you know, but the only thing I could really understand was that she obviously really, 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 really loved this man. <laughs> but she loved him so much that she could not see, you know, the the havoc that it was having on her life, you know. Um, and there was nothing I could tell her. I could tell from the way she loved him that I could not approach her and tell her, Hey, what this man is asking you to do is dangerous for your health. Hey, what this man is asking you to do is not a good thing for your children. I could, I could not go to her and say that to her, you know. And so before I left wholeheartedly. So tonight I wanted to tell people, hey, <laughs> tonight I wanted to go into how I became Hannah Love and what I learned about love because I've been Hannah Love for some years now. Um, on Facebook, I changed my name and on YouTube. Um, I think it's been about like five years now. And so I thought, you know, I should tell people, you know, when, when I uh, lit my throat chakra candle and I started doing the throat chakra exercises, that was one of the things that came to me. And it was like, tell people why you are Hana Love. It's not just a catchy name. It's, uh, you know, I didn't just adopt it because it was catchy. Okay, so here it is. Um, <laughs> and this is kind of very, very personal. But I'm going to give you as much details as I can without giving you everything. But here it is. Okay, so um, about five years ago, um, I was married. And um, I was going through a, a separation. I was going through a separation that was supposed to result in a divorce, right? And during that time, it was very tumultuous for me and <laughs> necessarily help him get better but my purpose was to help him believe that life was worth was worth fighting for because when somebody gives up on life there's nothing you can do to help them you can't you you have to recognize the difference between when somebody gives up on life and when when it's just somebody their health is failing cuz your health can be failing but if you're not giving up on life you're still fighting. You know that person's still in the fight. You know that person's, they're still going. They're still finding that second win. But when they just lay down and say, you know, I, I don't even care anymore. I don't, you know, I, I don't, I don't have a, I don't even, I don't even care about winning. I don't even care what happens. I'm, I'm done. You know, there's a real problem. You can't, there's, it's, it's no medication. There's no herbs or pills or anything that can help them. That you have to build their, you have to build their core belief first. You have to make them understand that life is worth living, that the sweetness of life. He had lost the sweetness of life. And so my goal was to try to show him that life was still sweet, you know, even as his ex-wife, I still wanted to, 
to show him that, you know, um, because I knew I, I had discovered something. And what I had discovered was that love, love is a force that you don't get in front of love. Trying to get in front of a woman or a man that's in love with someone, and you know that they're in a passionate, deep love with them, is like getting in front of a moving train. A moving train. Trust me, you will be a casualty. So stop in your tracks and just step away. You got to figure out another way because you're not going to be able to stop that train. And so I had to come to the realization that Love was not something that I could control. It was not something that I could control. It was not something that I could turn off and turn on when I wanted to. It was there. And it was something that I had to, uh, I had to acknowledge because when I didn't acknowledge it, I actually became physically sick. When I was going through the turmoil in myself of whether or not to go and help him, I actually fell physically sick. I fell sick. I could not eat. I could not drink. Uh, anything I tried to eat came right back up. I went to the doctor. They said, well, we don't, we don't find anything wrong t- with you. We don't know what's, what the problem is. But my intuition and, you know, that inner voice was saying, you know what the problem is. You know what it is. You are trying to <laughs> deny what it is that is.